Hello everyone. This will be a beginner's guide for wallet setup and making Bitcoin transactions on the cold card MK4. So I would recommend that you read the documents within the coldcard.com for more advanced options. If you are a beginner to hardware wallets, you should not worry as this was my first setup. So let's get started. In this video, we will be using the air gap fashion, which means you can fully disconnect your hardware device from the internet without ever hooking it up. It uses a micro SD card to transfer the data, and this adds additional protection for a device against hacking. If you don't want to use the air gap, then you can also hook up your cold card to the computer with a USB. It is still extremely secure to use. So I have broken these down into four steps, install the software, export the JSON, wallet creation, and sending and receiving Bitcoin transactions. Step one, installing the software. You will need to download a software wallet in order to interact with the cold card. When it comes to picking your wallet, you wanna choose one that works for you. There are several options, and here's a list of compatible wallets that you can use with your cold card. This is listed under the document section in the coldcard.com website. If you want, you can look up your operating device and how you will use your wallet. There are beginner and more advanced wallets. We will not go over every one, so do your own research. Today, we will be using this Sparrow wallet, and I use this wallet because it's a beginner wallet, and the setup seems pretty easy to use. I recommend going to the coldcard.com website and clicking on the user guide on the left-hand side, and then scrolling down to find the Sparrow wallet. The site has more information on the wallet that I recommend that you read over to familiarize yourself. The download will be located on the left. Choose your operating system and then there will be a walkthrough once you install. Sparrow Wallet is a Bitcoin only wallet. Before you start, you will want to configure your server and this is for Bitcoin transactions and interacting with the network. If you are a more advanced user, you can use your own node and pull data from your personal server, but you do not need a personal server. This wallet comes with the public electron, which we will be using today. The public electron is a reputable service, but it does have less privacy, but it is suitable for a beginner. So you wanna to go to the file and preferences, select the server on the lower left, and at the top, you'll see the server type different type, Bitcoin Core, Private Electron, and you want to choose the Public Electron Server. The URI I wouldn't worry about too much, but last you want to finally click the test connection and your server should be set up now. Now you can back up your information on the cold card. This is more of an advanced setting, but this helps you write your backup information in the future so you can restore your wallet. There is a way to identify your wallet by finding your eight character fingerprint. And this master fingerprint is the first bytes of your public key. And it's a way to identify that you're the correct wallet, but it does not help with backup. So you wanna to go to your cold card to advanced settings and identify, and this is your eight character fingerprint. Write this down, do not lose it. And then you can go to danger zone seed function, destroy seed, and you'll have a couple of warnings and then your seed will be destroyed. Again, this is a more advanced setting, um, just to compare your master fingerprint with the four bytes of your public key, um, so it's not required. Step two will be exporting your JSON file, and this is used for storing and transporting data, in our case, the cold card to the spare wallet. The JSON file needs to be exported from the cold card, which will contain all the public information necessary so that the spare wallet can import this watch only wallet. You want to connect your cold card to the power and enter your pin. Insert the micro SD card in the slot of the cold card. You want to navigate to advanced settings, micro SD card, and then you export your wallet. You'll see generic JSON export. You want to read the message shown, it's pretty long, and then you want to hit OK to continue. You'll then be prompted to an account number. You can leave this blank, or if you want, you can create a number. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'll probably choose zero. Yeah. 
Your cold card will then generate the JSON file and save it to the micro SD card as a cold card export JSON. You want to hit OK and then remove the micro SD card from your cold card and insert it into the card reader for your computer. Step three will be wallet creation and import of the JSON file. So your micro SD card should be in your drive and to create a new wallet, you will want to select file and new wallet. You can name your wallet, whatever you like. Then you will select the air gapped wallet and then import the file on the cold card. And you want to go into your untitled disk cold card drive. Usually you'll only have one file and that is the um, cold card export, but I have, I have additional wallets. So add the cold card export and hit apply. You do not have to have a password. This will just protect your uh, desktop wallet from anyone gaining access and you are all set to create your first transaction. Let's go ahead and get into sending and receiving Bitcoin. Receiving Bitcoin means putting Bitcoin from another wallet into your spare wallet, and then your cold card is used for storage and signing. Sending Bitcoin allows you to store your private keys on the cold card to hold safely until you're ready to spend them. So to receive Bitcoin, you need to give a sender a valid receive address generated by your wallet. A receive address will be shown along with a QR code and below there is a label for the transaction and if you want you can label it for memory but it's not really required. Now we're going to receive funds and to receive funds on Bitcoin you need to give the sender a valid receive address generated by your Sparrow wallet. A receive address will be shown along with a QR code you can copy that. And then I am using my Electron wallet. You want to select send and in the pay to area, paste that address down. You can add a description if you want, but you don't have to. And then put in your amount, however many sats that you would like to put in. Then next go to pay and then you'll, you'll need to put in your password and then you can put a fee rate in if you like. Um, I did not, but you can do that. It's an option. And then hit your send. So you check your wallet for unconfirmed status. So I'm gonna go back to the cold card and I'm gonna check on transactions. And here you see it that it's confirmed. So you'll need to wait until the Bitcoin miners verify the transaction. And in most cases, it's about 10 minutes, but again, you can use that pay scale if you want it sooner. If you are using an exchange to withdraw and deposit into the spare wallet, the process is pretty much the same. You want to go to your portfolio and in your portfolio, this is on Coinbase, so I'm gonna give that example. You have a withdraw button. You wanna hit withdraw and then it will say a crypto address. And you want to have your wallet address where you want to deposit it. So you use that same QR code or copy and paste. You put your amount of Bitcoin, your network fees that you're willing to pay, and then you submit it and follow the same steps as we did previously. So now we are ready to send Bitcoin. This means that you are sending Bitcoin from your cold card wallet to another wallet or maybe you want to transfer it to an exchange or an exit ramp. This does require a few more steps. Using your SD card to transfer partially signed Bitcoin transactions allows you to sign your cold card without ever touching the internet. In order for a Bitcoin transaction to be completed, there needs to be a digital signature to prove ownership. Partially signed Bitcoin transactions make communicating and signing unsigned transactions portable and easier for wallets and nodes. It also allows one or more parties to sign the same transactions at different times. A hardware wallet that uses partially signed Bitcoin transactions, like the cold card, allows users to make more easily signed transactions on a cold storage device and broadcast the signed transaction from a device connected to the internet. Now, let's transfer Bitcoin from the Sparrow wallet to an exchange. 
and see how the partially signed Bitcoin works. We will use Coinbase as an example. When you go to your portfolio, you want to click on the deposit button and then crypto address. You will see a warning sign initially indicating that you can only deposit Bitcoin with this account. Hit I understand. You will then be led to a wallet address and QR code for you to copy. You want to copy this address and go back to your Sparrow cold card account and paste the wallet address. There should be a label already. And then there will also be a fee range that allows you to choose your fee. You can use the toggle button to pick your amount. And at the bottom, it does show you your transactions where the fees will go. And at the bottom right, you can create transaction and then finalize to sign. Last, you wanna save your transaction onto the SD card. Now we are not done. We still need to transfer our SD card to the cold card and sign our partially signed Bitcoin transaction. So once you hook your SD card up to your device, you are going to be ready to sign and then it'll say okay to send and consolidating. You'll wait a moment and then you'll see the partially signed Bitcoin transaction. You can finalize that and sign and it'll be ready for broadcast. You then want to take your SD card out again and plug it back into the computer for the next transaction. You can load the transaction and then you want to find your signed, partially signed Bitcoin transaction and then you can broadcast it. And then it will take some time to broadcast but once it broadcasts to the network, you will have a deposit that you will see. If you like, you can check your transaction on mempool.space. The mempool is just a waiting area for pending Bitcoin transactions. You can do this by copying your address, going to the site and pasting it in the right hand corner. And then as you can see, when you scroll down, it gives you the ETA along with the fee rate. This wraps up the review and tutorial of the Cold Card MK4 by CoinKite. You now should be able to set up your device and make a Bitcoin transaction. Please follow our channel at the Crypto Economics Lab at the University of Cincinnati. You are not going to want to miss our next episodes in the Hardware Wallet series, where we research and review another hardware device. Until next time, everybody, have a great day.